You know what's better than receiving the perfect holiday gift? Enjoying it now and paying for it over time. Diamonds Direct makes holiday shopping easier than ever with a curated selection of the top gifts on your list and 0% APR for three years with equal payments. That's right, no interest for three years all December long at Diamonds Direct. Find out more and shop online at DiamondsDirect.com. Your love, our passion. Subject to credit approval. See website for details. The following is brought to you by the Social Suplex Podcast Network. This is John Silver, lead recruiter of The Dark Order, and you are listening to All Things Elite. special episode of Social Suplexes podcast about AEW with a proclivity for positivity. Welcome to All Things Elite. I'm your host, Floyd Johnson, and joining me today for a special episode of the show is our guy, uh, our guy, Mr. J.R. Perez. How are you doing today, J.R.? Well, you know, it's the honor's all mine because this is an honorable podcast and we have an honorable show coming up, so let's get started with some honorable talk about ring of honor final battle i'm so excited for a specifically one match that was announced yesterday so i'm glad that we're going to be covering this because i think look on paper this is one of the most stacked uh pay-per-views of the year uh regardless of any promotion all right so as he might have just spoiled or you saw from the, the show notes when you clicked on this, what we're doing today is a ROH final battle preview. I just we didn't really get to talk about on the show the uh on the All Things Elite this week because the card hadn't been finalized. Last night we got some of the last matches announced, so we got a full card of seven matches. Austin is packing and getting ready to uh, go on a cruise for like uh, three years because he abandoned me. But, you know, Austin's out of town. And so I called JR, the the cleaner. He, he, he Forget Kenny Omega. This is the real cleaner. He's, the, he's our four. He comes in, hits a home run every time. The DH. You know what I mean? So this is JR. We're going to talk about final battle. It's only seven matches. We're going to run down. We're going to try to get in and out. Uh, we even talked to each other about staying, you know, less long-winded so we can get in and out. So make sure you are downloading this fine show on Google or Apple Podcasts. Please leave a rating and review if you are so inclined. Follow us at AT Elite Pod, at Social Suplex, Austin Z- at Austin Summowitz. That's S Z U M O W I C Z and at Floyd Johnson Jr. on Twitter. Uh, you can follow JR at Lucha Professor, but he's really not on Twitter anymore, uh, you know, for his own mental health. But uh, that's how you follow him is at Lucha Professor. I think he does check his Instagram, so you can follow him on uh, Lucha uh, Professor on Instagram, right? Am I, did I get that in for you? Yep, that's one hundred percent correct. I, you know, it's actually on a small, quick tangent. You sort of along with it. Take a break from social media every now and then because being on Twitter for the last month has actually been pretty awesome. Because I don't get into any more arguments like I used to. You know, you know what? Uh, I've heard of the social media cleanse, and for all the people that need it and need the break, I say take it and enjoy your break. Uh, for me. I don't need a break from social media. Social media literally doesn't affect me. If you're doing well, great. If you're doing bad, that sucks. I hope you do better. 
I mean, it really doesn't bother me. Other people's opinion don't angry me. Social media is just a thing. So that's me. I am different. I know some people. It, it gets on you, especially with JR. Stupid people hurt his, hurt his soul. So it gets at It him. hurts my head bad. Yeah, so uh, let's, let's jump right into the final battle preview. Uh, final battle is going to be uh, Saturday, December 10th, 2022. Uh, at uh, what's the arena? It's in Arlington, Texas. It's uh, UTA. I have it right here. Okay. It is the College Park Center at in Arlington, Texas. It's the University of Texas at Arlington um, Arena where they play basketball. Yeah, funny, interesting thing about UTA. Uh, I think three of my sisters and I think eight of my nieces and nephews have all went to UTA because they all my family lives in the Arlington area. So that's pretty cool. I've actually watched, I believe, Slammiversary 2010 there or 11. One of those. I remember at this uh, certain arena, I actually met Dixie Carter outside of the building. That was pretty cool. Uh, so, yeah, I've been in this. one. This will be my second time in this building. So uh, looking forward to this. Um, uh, pre-show starts at 3 o'clock Eastern, 2 o'clock Central. Actual show starts at 4 o'clock Eastern, 3 o'clock Central. So we got a midday show. The point of them doing this is to get not go up against the UFC. So you can go watch ROH and then watch UFC. But there's also another wrestling show starting in the evening. Uh, it's NXT. What's that show called? Deadline. NXT Deadline. It starts, I believe their pre-show starts at 6. And uh, um, what's that show? Fightfuls. Denise Salzado is on the pre-show for NXT this week, uh, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool. I was kind of happy for her when I saw that. So that's uh, pretty dope. Uh, but yeah, so you can either make it a wrestling day, you can make it a wrestling then MMA day, or you can just watch ROH and just be done with it. I'm going to watch ROH and then drive home and work overnight because I am stupid and I'm an idiot. I'm a <laughs> stupid idiot. So that's what's going to happen. And so here we go. Let's uh, let's jump right into the preview. ROH Final Battle. The Zero Hour that starts at 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Eastern. There, We don't know what matches are on the Zero Hour yet. So I'm I, guessing... I, so I think that, that one guy is going to win. Yeah, as I say, TK is going to announce it tomorrow or throw it out Saturday. So you're getting the preview minus zero hour. So here we go. First match we're going to look at. This is our predictions, previews, everything. We're going to have for the ROH six-man six title, we're going to have Dalton Castle and his boys versus the Embassy, which is the Gates of Agony and Brian Cage. JR, give us a breakdown. Give us your prediction. So, in other words, who you got? Yeah, so obviously, you know, Tony Khan took over uh, the ownership of Ring of Honor this year, and Dalton Castle has been a mainstay for Ring of Honor for a number of years. But I, you and I were both at uh, Supercard of Honor where the Gates of Agony it debuted. Um, I'm a big fan of Khan, a big fan of Toa. I see... Uh, and along with um, Brian Cage, is a part of um, oh, Prince Nana's group, the Embassy. I think this is one of the directions Tony Khan wants to go, where you kind of have this youth movement. You have some talent who are good talent, has had a run on indies, but may not be ready for you know a long run on AEW. So I like um, the Embassy winning this, kind of starting in a new direction as we enter... Uh, Ring of Honor into 2023. So that's my pick to dethrone Dalton Castle and the boys is the embassy to win this one. Well, so let me, let me, that was JR's take, my take on it. I am going with the embassy. We agree on the first match. I just think, you know, having a powerful heel six man tag would be the way to go. I think Brian Cage who I've always said is underutilized and uh, was underutilized in AEW. Maybe he can get more action in ROH. So I'm really looking forward to this match. It just makes sense. I mean, it's Dalton Castle and the boys. This is size, uh, speed versus strength. And I think um, uh, Gates of Agony are going to pull this out. Second match, 
we have, you know, kind of a reunion here. We have STP Shane Taylor Promotions, or is it Productions? I don't know which one it is. Shane Taylor Promotions. It's Promotions. So representing Shane Taylor Promotions will be the man himself and former tag partner of Keith Lee, Shane Taylor, and his guy, J.D. Griffey. And they will be going against the tag team of Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland, a also known as Swerve in our glory. JR, who you got? Uh, as as we know, um, I heard at Full Gear, there's, there's been some dissension among Keith Lee and Swerve. Um, that occurred during their tag team championship match against the Acclaim. And there has been continued dissension leading up to their encounter, or or this matchup, I should say, for a final battle. As we saw, Shane Taylor made his debut um, last week and kind of threw down this, this challenge. And it's a very interesting one because, in my opinion, and from my point of view, I think this can go one or two ways how – how this match plays out and what the outcome could be. Um, in the end, though, I like uh, Shane Taylor Promotions getting the win due to some sort of, as the term I like to use, chicanery evolving Swerve Scott. I think we're going to see a turn. The What I don't know and what I'm interested in seeing is how that would happen. Will we see potentially Swerve spin off on his own finally and be... Um, his own superstar. Could we see Swerve join Shane Taylor Promotions, or could we see Keith Lee uh, join Shane Taylor? Uh, years ago, in in, the, in Ring of Honor, I believe it was around 2010, 2011. Keith Lee and Shane Taylor used to be a tag team called the Pretty Boy Killers. And as a fan of Shane Taylor today, I am interested in seeing maybe this could be a thing. So. I do like Shane Taylor Promotions getting the win um, due to, again, as a term I like to use, chicanery revolving Swerve Scott that will cost his team the match. Well, my prediction is very similar to that. I am going with Shane Taylor Promotions, but I have Swerve Strickland turning, fully turning on Keith Lee and joining Shane Taylor Promotions. Maybe they get a different name or whatever, but uh, I think Swerve at his highest power was when he was with Hit Row, and it was him, and he had his crew behind him. That was Swerve at his strongest. Does he need a crew? No. He Swerve Strickland is immensely talented, does not need a crew. But good Lord, it does make him so much more imposing <coughs> when he has people behind him. Shane Taylor being his heavy, J.D. Griffin, Griffey, they already have the uh, Shane Taylor promotion's name. It fits in the Ring of Honor. Swerve Strickland, you could actually push him as the Ring of Honor champion in the next year as you prepare him in a AEW. I just think there is so much that can be done with this group being together. And yeah, so I got Swerve Strickland finally completing the turn on Keith Lee, busting him up, and Shane Taylor Productions or Promotions getting away. I'm going to keep switching back from Productions to Promotions. I'm sorry. I know it's Promotions. I have now confirmed its promotions, but I still slipped out with productions. But STP for the win. On to match number three. <coughs> Excuse me. We have Daniel Garcia versus Willa Yuta. I think this is three for the ROH Pure Title match. Their final battle at final battle, John Moxley said. On Dynamite last night, and we'll get a Dynamite preview on the next week's show, but on Dynamite last night, uh, John Moxley said that um, they were going to be done. At Final Battle, this was the final battle. JAS versus Blackpool Combat Club is over. Every This is what everybody wants. Everybody's sick of this rivalry, but nowhere to, no better way to finish it than that final battle. And when we were kind of discussing ROH's pay-per-views, what two matches did I call for this pay-per-view, JR? Uh, Claudio versus Chris Jericho and Daniel Garcia versus Willer Yuta. I, I just the name is Final Battle. It just made <laughs> sense. So ROH Pure Title match, Garcia versus Yuta. Who you got? I am going um 
I think I am a big fan of heel champions for the most part. Um, and I think going in line with a direction and from what I see, as much as I like Willie Yuta, but I see so much potential in Daniel Garcia. And going in again, I everything, all the decisions I, I'm making with this show, Final Battle, is the new era of Ring of Honor as we go into 2023. I like Daniel Garcia to retain the pure champion. I I completely can see him as a prominent player on what ever sort of um, future television deal that Tony Khan may have in store for Ring of Honor. So I think he would be a prominent, I think he he could be a, um, in my opinion, a more of a selling point um, for people to watch that show as a heel champion than as a babyface champion of Will Yuta. So I like Daniel Garcia to retain the pure championship. So I got a different take on this. Uh, I think ROH is going to be used as developmental for uh, AEW. I think Daniel Garcia is further along in his development and is more of a main card ready product than Will or Yuta right now. So that being said, as Will or Yuta being the one that I would say needs a little bit more, I'm going with Will or Yuta to win and be the ROH pure title champion and to end this rivalry with Will or Yuta as a champion, proving that professional wrestlers always beat sports entertainers. So yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Will or Yuta. And, and that was another thing I, I, you know, I thought about this later on in the day. It's like this whole idea is that sports entertainers versus professional wrestlers. We all know what side Tony Khan is on. So you know what side has to win the feud. Professional wrestlers all day. Go Will or Yuta. On to the fourth match. We have Samoa Joe, the reigning ROH TV champion, the reigning AEW TNT champion versus the Bullet Clubs. What is it? Rock Hard Juice Robinson for the ROH TV title. Uh, That's the only title that's available in this one. It's the ROH title. Samoa Joe versus Juice, Juice, Juice. JR, who you got? I got myself in this one because I'm actually really excited for this match. I've been, um, I like Juice before. I really like Juice as a heel in the Bullet Club. I like a lot of the promos he's cut. I like, I like his look. I like his demeanor. I've become a real, uh, a big fan of this. I think he has a nasty edge to him that, um, that can match Samoa Joe's nasty edge. I think this is going to be a really fun, hard hitting match. I'm really excited for this. Um, you know, one of the things is sometimes I, I, in my mind, I think I see something play out because one of the things that you and I have talked about off air is, you know, wrestling is kind of repetitive. So in my mind, I can see uh, outside interference as we know Samoa Joe is feuding with Wardlow because of the TNT championship and the change that occurred at full gear. I can see Wardlow getting involved, costing Samoa Joe the uh the ROH television championship and Juice Robinson getting getting the belt. So um and even though I'm saying that I feel like I'm gonna be wrong, but that's what I that's what I can envision. So that's what I'm gonna stick with Juice Robinson to become the new ROH television champion. Uh due to outside interference by Wardlow. I'm being, gonna be very specific on this. So uh I looked at this one. This is probably my hard second hardest prediction. The next match after this is my hardest prediction. So um, Samoa Joe versus Juice Robinson. Uh, I can see interference happening. I can see it not happening. You know, I'm going to go with Samoa Joe. I think the goal is to keep him hot, keep him a double champion. I think he'll eventually lose after he loses the TNT title. But for now, I think they're trying to protect his reign. So I'm going with Samoa Joe to retain in this match. But I'm going to just talk about the match a little bit and why it makes me excited. When I was first introduced to New Japan, there was Kazuchika Okada, Kenny Omega. But the division that really hooked me and let me know New Japan was different than anything I've seen before was the Never Wait Open. Shopping for the holidays on Instacart means you can get gifts delivered in as fast as an hour. 
And when you pay with Klarna, you can spread your payments over time. You can shop over 900 retailers, including Best Buy, Kroger, Sephora, Safeway, Bed Bath & Beyond, Dick's Sporting Goods, and more. Card it now. Pay with Klarna. New Instacart customers get $25 off $100 when paying with Klarna with code KLARNA25. Terms apply. See instacart.com for more details. By giving, people will be helping Nationwide Children's Hospital find cures, brighten patients' holidays, and people will be able to support their neighbors when they need it most. When they donate, they will activate in real time a butterfly-inspired light show for patients this holiday season. They will add holiday cheer to the lives of kids who really need a reason to smile. No one wants to think about their child being sick, but should that day come, the donation they make this year could help the care their child could need in the future. Please give now at nationwidechildrens.org slash give. This episode is brought to you by Zelle. Whenever you're sending money through an app or online, it's important to do it safely. Here are a few helpful tips. First, always make sure you know and trust the person you are sending money to. Second, confirm you have entered their contact details correctly. And finally, if you don't trust the person or your recipient is rushing you to send money right away, Think twice before sending money through an app or online. Division. It was just super physical, lots of strikes. You had this guy named Tomohiro Ishii, one of the toughest men ever. And, you know, this match with Juice Robinson just being giant and really going more to the strike back off since he's been the heel. And then Samoa Joe, they are both big athletic dudes that are going to knock the shit out of each other. It just gives me that never open weight uh, feeling here. So I'm really looking forward to this match. Uh, Joe's going to kill you. And then you got juice, juice, juice. It's going to be a fight. And I honestly, you know what match? Everybody that's listening to this knows what match is the match I'm looking forward to most. This is probably number two. And I think it could be one of the ones that steal the show. All right. Then we move into the other hardest match for me to predict. We have ROH Women's Champion Mercedes Martinez versus the new vicious Athena. You know, you know, you had the vicious Viking Raiders. No, the vicious Athena for the ROH Women's title. JR. Hmm. Let me ask. What's that question I was going to ask? Who you got? You know, I've I've been a fan of, of Athena for a while, and I feel that when she came to AEW, I think she I feel like she was going to get a television run that she was cut short by her previous employer, and I think it hasn't quite worked out for her. Um, but I, with what Ring of Honor stands for, um, I think Athena is all about that, um, and I think is a major could be a major um, player for Ring of Honor moving forward. Um, and I like Athena to dethrone Mercedes Martinez um, and becoming the new ROH uh, Women's World Champion. So, yes, I feel like this new, physical, vicious, unrelenting, hard-hitting Athena versus the original vicious, hard-hitting women's wrestler Mercedes Martinez. Uh, like I, that's the what I that's like what drew me to Mercedes. It was that she was just so physical and violent when she wrestled. I just love that about her. So this is gonna be like right in the wheelhouse with Athena. I think Mercedes is the matriarch of this ROH women's division, and as much as I want Athena to win especially in, you know, the Dallas Fort Worth metro area which she is from. I'm going to go with Mercedes Martinez. Thing that wins, I'll be happy. I'll be, you know, jumping up and down for, but I just feel like like the gut says Mercedes Martinez. Like I said, I thought this was the hardest match to predict cuz you can go either way and it's not going to be wrong. So, uh I'm going to go with Mercedes and I'm just going to stick with it and you know, we'll move on that before that. Um the next match on most shows, Dynamite, uh, most pay-per-views, this next match would be the main event of the show. But in our world, in me and JR's mind, it is not the main event of this show. So for the ROH World Heavyweight title, you have the current 
reigning, defending champ, the Ocho, Chris Jericho, maybe the greatest ROH champion of all time, versus, good Lord, the man that I literally saw carry John Moxley like a baby last night. He is so physically strong and gifted. The Marvel, the, the, like a real-life superhero, Claudio Castagnoli of the Blackpool Combat Club. JR, I got to ask, a quien tienes? And in Spanish, you know what that is? Who I got. Who you got? Uh, it's very simple. Claudio Castagnoli. I, for, I, along with many other fans of Ring of Honor, felt that there was no reason why Chris Jericho should should have been the Ring of Honor World Champion besides the, the concept of trying to sell a pay-per-view. Um and obviously Jericho is one of the biggest names AEW has, so I completely understand. But, I mean, I'm ready to move on. And just like Moxley says, this this has to be over. I mean, this has been one of, I mean, we're going back to what, February or March this feud has been going on. So I'm ready for all this to be over with. Claudio Castanelli, uh, you're um, getting another run with the ROH uh, World Championship at, um, after defeating Chris Jericho at Final Battle. All right. Yes, this is the big one. Um, I'm. I gotta agree with Jr. Um, John Moxley at times, and when he does his promos, he speaks for the fans. And every fan I know has one thing in common: they're tired of these two factions fighting. <laughs> so, with ROH looking for a TV deal, all that kind of stuff, and Tony Khan promising less focus of ROH on AEW programming, it only makes sense that the real life superhero the the face of pure wrestling Claudio Castagnoli wins the ROH title so I'm going with Claudio JR is going with Claudio so we'll see what happens there I think you should go with Claudio to everyone but you know if the Ocho pulls it off you know Chris Jericho you know a shout out to my boy Rich that says never count out Chris Jericho never so I'm not going to count him out I just think Claudio's going to pull it out. So looking forward to this match because you know these two professionals, they've worked a lot. They're going to try to bring something in this third match that you've never seen before. And the idea that everybody's looking forward to our tag match of FTR and Briscoes, I know Chris Jericho's going to go out of his way to top it and prove that he is the greatest of all time. And last but not least, this will probably be our longest part of this show. And, and we save it for last, so that's amazing. We have me and JR's boys, Cash and Dax, a.k.a. Bald and Hair, Cash Wheeler, Dax Harwood, the ROH, AAA, and New Japan World Tag Team Champions facing off against them boys. Violence personified the Briscoes, Mark and Jay, in a dog collar match for the ROH World Tag Team Titles. Briscoes going for number 13. JR, who you got? Um, you so, uh, if for those of you who don't know, this week, uh, Pro wrestling just say dropped their their top tag team list and um, uh, FTR uh, um, was two and Briscoes was three and um, the only reason why uh, they weren't one and two respectively was due to um, lack of matches on television in my opinion um, because I don't I I don't think it's controversial to say that. They have the two best tag team matches in 2022. You know, promotions don't matter. They had the two best tag team matches uh, as Supercard of Honor and Death Before Dishonor. So in each match, the, the stakes was upped. The, the next match, when you went to the two and three falls, as great as the first one was, the, the second match was better. Was even better. 
And how can you top what they did um, back in July? Do a one of the most brutal matches in the history of professional wrestling, a dog collar match, whether it was the, um, you know, what we saw earlier with MJF and uh, CM Punk or the late Bro- uh, Brody Lee and the American Hammer Cody Rhodes or Greg the Hammer Valentine versus uh, Rowdy Rowdy Piper. Um, and, you know, we've seen some other, you know, chain like matches where there was the Road Warriors versus the Russians. And, you know, we know what they both bring, you know, the, the brawling style of the Briscoes, the technical ability of, of the FTR, but FTR is like a renaissance team. They can, and they, they can do it all. And I expect a just hellacious knockdown drag out ass kicking of a match that all four of these guys are going to do their best because every single time these teams step out, whether it's against each other or against different opponents, they give it 110% every single time. Um, But I think as 2022 comes to a close and not knowing what's in the future for FTR and what potential plan, again, I keep saying potential plans. We don't know what those plans are, but just the idea of what Ring of Honor is. The Briscoes is Ring of Honor. Briscoes are Ring of Honor. Um, And I think this is the time where the torch gets passed back to the Briscoes. And I think, unfortunately, for us as FTR fans, the Briscoes um, are going to win a war and become, um, as they, as if I remember correctly, the 13-time world champions. I was listening to the Briscoes cut a promo today, and I tell you, I was telling JR that they uh, they cut the most intelligent, dumb-sounding promos ever. Because if you take it at its face value and you just hear the country accent, you're like, oh, my God, they're just yelling. But if you break down what they said, it's like, we lost to you in a straight-up singles match. Y'all are the baddest team we've ever faced. We don't give credit to anybody, but we give credit to you. We lost to you in a two-out-of-three falls match. Yes. Okay, we get it. But y'all do tape study. Y'all love Bret Hart. And if you're having a regular match or a two-out-of-three match, you're going to take Bret Hart over Terry Funk every single time. But if it's a barbed wire match, if it's a fight, it's a street fight, and those same two people are wrestling, who are you going to take? You're going to take Terry Funk. So they basically laid out to you their, you know, like idols and how they respect in wrestling in a very, like, it's a very intelligent kind of promo. In this rivalry, FTR is Bret Hart. Briscoes or Terry Funk. The first two matches, they had rules. You're always going to go with Bret Hart, and that's why they won. In the traditional tag team styles of matches, FTR is going to beat the Briscoes. But when you chain two people together, you throw all the rules out, and you turn it into a fight. And basically... Whoever can out survive, whoever can put the most physical violence on the other team without any rules are going to win the match. It's going to be really hard to beat the Briscoes. And you know I love FTR and I'll be there wearing my FTR and Briscoe shirt because I got to be at FTR Briscoes 1 and I get to be at FTR Briscoes 3. Thank God for that. But I will be at that show. And there's going to be buckets of blood parental advisory sticker on this show. If you if you don't want your kids seeing blood. Send them out the room for this match. Because I'm pretty sure they're going to be busted open within three minutes. This is going to be the physical most violent match FTR has ever been in. This will not be the most physical violent match Briscoe's have ever been in. By a mile. Because <laughs> these dudes are crazy. And they've been in every type of violent match there's ever been in. So as much as it pains me to say. Especially with, you know, they're going away from ROH being featured on AEW. 
them boys is probably going to walk away out this one. And they're not going to win. They're not going to win. They will out-survive FTR. They will out-survive FTR. The team that just uh, had a heartbreaking loss on Dynamite is going to be physically decimated by them boys. FTR and Briscoes. I got the Briscoes. Uh, the news. Uh, we only have one news item. Tony Khan said he would announce what's in store for ROH after final battle. Uh, so uh, a lot of people think it's a streaming deal. Uh, maybe on HBO Max, maybe just a YouTube show. Uh, I, I literally have nothing. If he knows he's doing everything to keep secret, Dave doesn't even have any ideas. He didn't even say, well, I know, but I can't say it or anything like that. He's like literally has no idea. So we'll find out there. Uh, I'd like to thank JR for joining me on the show. Do you have any parting thoughts for the people? Uh, you know, it's, it's one of the things where it, this has been a year-long culmination, I think, from the time that Tony Khan announced that he purchased Ring of Honor. And, you know, you and I were there at, at Supercard of Honor where you saw, like, the seeds of this kind of new direction and um and you and i saw in our respective homes the next step which was death before dishonor in Lowell, massachusetts and then now north in texas you know final battle and i think tony khan really believes in the roh product the history of, of roh what it can mean for you know the, the wrestling fans the wrestling world and I'm not just looking forward to the pay-per-view. I'm looking forward to what happens after the pay-per-view because one of the things I think that AEW fans, um, you know, and you and I are part of that and who, you know, I now would say Ring of Honor is kind of has the similar fan base have become accustomed to is there's at the end of every pay-per-view, um, there's always seems to be just a little, some surprises, a little changes. You move forward, you know, it's kind of, you don't, you don't necessarily reset. You just kind of recalibrate and see this new direction because you are, you gained, um, you know, previously with the AEW and in Ring of Honor, you gain new talent or you gain something. And so um, definitely looking forward to see what they do. I do believe wholeheartedly no matter what and no matter what fashion ROH does need to have a television deal um and I think Tony Khan knows that I, he's alluded to that about you know because there has been some criticism about ROH and AEW so in whatever fashion it is I hope as we move on as uh as the fallout from final battle going into 2023 is that we do see some sort of weekly ROH show that's dedicated to ROH and ROH talent. So uh, I hope that is discussed after the show on on Saturday. And and when and if it is discussed and brought up, I know it's you know no matter where it's at, when it's at, it's going to be um, a huge benefit for the wrestling world, the wrestling fan community, and the talent that is going to be a part of that show. All right, and I would just shout out to FTR. I'm pretty sure they're not going to listen to this show, but if they do, uh, the last calendar year of what you've done has been awe-inspiring, and 2022, the year of FTR, will be a year I will always remember. You somehow elevated the tag team division while not really being in the AEW title picture, not getting a title shot to damn near the last month. Uh, you, you know, just had just banger after banger after banger to steal a line from Sheamus. So I definitely appreciate that. But this three match series, it'll be three matches in a calendar year between you and the Briscoes. I even not even seeing Saturday yet. I'm going to say this is probably going to be the greatest, one of the greatest track team trilogies of all time. So, uh, be safe, do all your things, do your things, but I know you're not going to be, and you're going <laughs> to, you're going to kill each other and bleed buckets. So it would be my honor to have been there for two out of three matches. 
Uh, JR was there for the first match. Jackie was there for the second match. So our little group of FTR has been at all three matches. So we're going to always represent. And whenever we go, we always bring the other two with us, at least in spirit. So I'm very happy that we will be there for this. And so uh, that is it. That's the ROH preview. I thank you for everybody who jumped in. We tried to keep it as short as possible. Uh, we're both kind of long-winded, but if you notice, we kind of kept our thoughts pretty brief. And we will leave you like I always leave you. Whether it is home, work, or school, always do your best to be elite. <music>